The potential role that new technology can play in terrorism financing, from financial technology or fintech to social media, has been a growing subject of anxiety in policymaking circles in Europe. With their focus on speed, efficiency, and a positive user experience, new technologies not only have the potential to make life easier for ordinary consumers, but also reduce the frictions terrorist financiers face when funding attacks and organizational activities. Despite the recent focus on new technologies as an avenue for terrorist financing, this has not led to a consensus about how great the risks really are. The debate has polarized into two broad positions. One, which fears the most, suspecting that innovation will make life easier for terrorist financiers, and another, which sees new technologies as no more or less risky than pre-existing technologies or conventional financial activities. To help clarify the issues around this debate, the European Commission asked Rusi Europe as part of Project Craft to investigate the extent to which new technologies have posed new or exacerbated existing terrorism financing risks in Europe. For evidence, we reviewed relevant academic and policy literature and credible media reports, conducted 25 semi-structured interviews with experts, and reviewed 212 cases of successful and disrupted attacks in Europe, as well as 49 cases of confirmed or suspected financing of terrorist organizations between January 2015 and November 2021. 74% of the attacks in Europe studied for this research have been conducted by lone actors or self-activating terrorists. Where information is publicly available on attack financing, new technologies rarely feature when terrorists are funding or preparing attacks. And when they do appear, they tend to be well-known first-generation payment platforms, which are ubiquitous in society in general. Noticeably, virtual assets and cryptocurrencies were only used in a very small handful of operational financing cases. Our study has revealed more examples of new technology being used in aspects of organizational terrorism financing for raising and transferring funds for terrorist groups than what can be seen in operational financing. Again, established payment platform service providers appear, as does social media as a means of facilitating pop-up crowdfunding campaigns. In addition, there are some more notable examples of virtual assets being used to raise funds across the ideological spectrum. However, most subsectors of fintech are unaffected, and there are few indications that new technologies have displaced older techniques, such as the use of money service businesses, hawala, and cash couriering, which continue to dominate the scene. What appears to be more the case is the use of old and new methods together in pragmatic combinations that suit terrorist financiers. Some of the rhetoric on the risks associated with new technologies from leading EU policymakers, as well as public messaging from the Commission, appears unbalanced in light of the scale of the landscape and the levels of risk. New technology does not equal virtual assets alone, and novelty does not necessarily equate higher risk. The heavy emphasis on the vulnerability of new technology sectors per se sits uneasily alongside the Commission's stated desire to promote digital and financial innovation. A better balance needs to be struck and actively communicated. When it comes to regulation, the EU's approach of integrating most elements of fintech into the pre-existing anti-money laundering and counterterrorism financing structure follows the pattern of over three decades. However, it lacks sensitivity and nuance. There are clear risks that a one-size-fits-all approach to emerging sectors that can easily be undermined by regulatory burdens. A lighter touch, like what's been applied to return-based crowdfunding, would have been a more appropriate in subsectors at lower risk, especially at an early stage of their development. We recommend that the European supervisory authorities produce FATF-style sector-focused guidance on applying the risk-based approach to different fintech subsectors, and the European banking authorities' risk factor guidance should also be updated. But where there may be risk, there is also opportunity. The digitally native nature of many fintechs offers new avenues for these firms to contribute to counterterrorism financing efforts outside of the suspicious transaction reports regime, including through the sharing and proactive analysis of some non-financial data they may hold, like a user's IP address, for example. National financial intelligence units should enter into dialogue with the fintech sector in their jurisdiction to establish partnerships for data sharing as part of suspicious activity reporting. Similar considerations should be taken as the EU's new anti-money laundering agency takes shape. While they are not financial tools per se, 
the communications capabilities common to social media platforms allow extremists to share financial information or direct others how and where to send funds. This makes such platforms valuable tools for terrorism financing, a point which is yet to be recognized by the relevant EU regulation on online terrorist content, which is why we recommend that this and other relevant regulations be explicitly updated to preclude the sharing of financial information or directions for terrorism financing purposes. Social media platforms should also have a legal responsibility to report terrorism financing relevant information to the National Financial Intelligence Unit, or preferably to national law enforcement or intelligence agencies with counterterrorism or counterterrorism financing investigative responsibilities. Finally, financial information sharing partnerships have proved a helpful addition to the pre-existing financial intelligence sharing structures of the anti-financial crime regime. At this time, the Europol Financial Intelligence Public-Private Partnership has limited its private sector membership to systemically significant financial institutions alone. As a result, important avenues for dialogue between the long-term core stakeholders in the anti-financial crime regime and new entrants into the financial world are being lost. We encourage Europol to invite the involvement of leading European fintechs, especially in the banking and payment subsectors, donation-based crowdfunding, virtual assets, and also social media, potentially at the working group level at first, to inform the work of the European supervisory authorities and Europol on better regulatory guidance and intelligence collection on terrorism financing risks. Overall, our study serves to narrow the divergence between pessimists and optimists. There are undoubtedly terrorism financing risks from some new technologies, but this is not a generalized risk across fintech and, in, and is greater in some subsectors than others. Terrorism financing risk is, moreover, present beyond the financial sector. Social media can exacerbate risk when used in tandem with old and new financial methods to choreograph organizational funding campaigns. In addressing terrorism financing risks arising from new technologies, there is a danger in assuming that these risks, or their absence, are inherent and immutable. However, the picture is likely to change over time, bit by bit, particularly with wider societal use of different new technologies.